Hi and welcome to this little tutorial on how to set up the NetApp ONTAP simulator in VirtualBox. The simulator that NetApp offers is downloadable from NetApp's MySupport website for VMware, ESXi, Workstation, Fusion and Player. My multi-talented friend Martin Eymond suggested that you could also set it up in VirtualBox and he sent me some steps how to do it with a suggestion to create a little video on this. So all thanks go to him. If you want to just get the flow of it, you can find it here. It's on uadmin.nl in it NetApp Simulator VBox. And you will find the steps to set up the simulator. If you still want to have a look at this tutorial, you can, of course. So this is what we'll do. The prerequisite is that you have VirtualBox up and running. I am using a MacBook for this, but obviously you could be running Windows or Linux. Now this is what we'll do. I will first give you the steps and then we will do it. We will create a directory to hold our files. Then we will download the simulator from mysupport.netup.com. We will unzip the simulator or untorrent or whatever you want to call it. Then we will make sure that the simulator disks are unzipped as well. And we create a new virtual machine with the following settings. This is really important. The type is going to be FreeBSD. Then the memory settings will be 8 gigabytes for this VM. Hard disks, we are going to say, you are not going to get any hard disks. We are going to supply them later. Then the network settings should be bridged. We are going to set all four interfaces to bridged. And we should add a CPU to the settings. So we end up with two CPUs. We also add a serial port. And then we will add the hard disks that we have unzipped. Then we boot the VM for the first time. We go to the boot menu. We initialize all the disks. We set the admin password and set up a single node cluster. And then we will be done. So if you like, we can have a look at this. So as I said, I'm using a MacBook and I've got a disk drive which has about three terabytes of space available, which should be more than enough for the simulator. So the first thing I do is I create a subdirectory in which I'm going to store all of my files. So I create a VBox and then I open a browser and go to mysupport.netup.com because we have to download the simulator. So I sign in and after I've signed in I go to the download section which will give me access to the product evaluation in which I can find the simulator. So I want to get the simulator so I select data on tap simulator and scroll down to acknowledge some license agreements and I continue. Now I could download 9.5, but I'm going to stick with 9.4. I don't know why, but I'm going to, I could just as well download 9.5, but I'm going to go for 9.4. So first I'm going to take the license file. Uh, we're not going to be setting up licenses, but I just want to make sure that you download that because you will be needing that later if you start setting up your environment. So I download it to the VBox directory, and after I've done that, I can start downloading the simulator itself which is, as you can see, an OVA file. Well, it's going to go to the same directory and the download will start. That will take quite some time depending on your bandwidth, of course. And after it's downloaded, we have to unarchive it because it's an OVA file, which is an archive file. And depending on your operating system environment, this almost one gigabyte file will have to be untarred or unarchived or whatever you want to call it. Let's first check what type of file it is. And as we already guessed, it's a tar archive. So what I'll do is I'll untar it. And I'm going to use ZXF, which means uncompress, uh, untar, and the file is the OVA file. So that will take a while. And after it's untarred, I will have some disk devices in there, which are GNU zipped. So these are compressed files, they have to be uncompressed. And we can do that with a tool called the GNU unzip tool, which is gunzip. So we run gunzip and then specify the four disk drives that we want to unzip. So we unzip all of these disks. And basically this is all we have to do in that VBox directory. So we've got four unzipped disk devices, VMDKs, that we can use in VirtualBox. So we can boot from the first one if we like. 
So the next thing I do is I will create a new virtual machine and we have to stick to the settings that Martin proposed. So we say it's a single node and it's 9.4. Then I'm going to store this in the VBox directory, obviously, because that is where my virtual machine will live. So I open it and I also specify that it's BSD and it's 64-bit and continue then the uh, memory size should be 8 gigabytes and we're nearly done now all we have to do is say we don't need a hard disk because we have our own hard disks right so we don't care that it won't boot because we'll supply the hard disks so that it will boot later on we don't need the floppy we don't need the optical device and we need two CPUs and that's all set. Now we do the rest of the settings. We don't power it on yet. We do the rest of the settings. So first we're going to get rid of this um, optical drive, remove it, then we add disks. So the disks that we'll be adding are the disks that we just unzipped. So we first take the first drive. Fortunately there are only four disks, so that won't take too long. Let's just do that. So we choose the disk, take the second one, and add the third one. And the last one. Clicking is my middle name. OK, this is the last disk, and I'm done. Now I go to the network section because uh, I don't want to have network address translation. I want to be able to access my simulator from the, uh, from the network. So I enable all three, all four adapters and make sure that they're all bridged. So I say OK. Then I go back to the settings and add a serial port. So if I want to run an application that connects to the console, then I can use the serial port. Uh, a last look at the settings. We don't have to do anything else. We have done what we needed to do. Now we can boot it for the first time. And we don't like this little screen. So what I'll do is I'll stop the boot process by pressing the space bar. So now it's in the loader, which is like the BIOS. And we're going to have a somewhat larger view. So my virtual screen 1 is not big enough. So I set it to 250, something like that. So now it's a little bit bigger and we can see what we're doing. First, let's print in the system serial number. This is the serial number that you will have to change if you will add a second node. And you have to change the serial number for a second time. But we're not going to do all that because we're going to create a single node cluster. So it starts booting on tab 9.4 and then I press Ctrl C to enter the boot menu and once I'm in there I can select one of the menu items and the one that we'll be needing is the initialize all disks because if we don't do that it will not have zero disks so it won't be able to boot. So I see all the uh, menu items we're going to ignore all of those. The only one we need is item number four, which is clean configuration and initialize all of the disks. So we do that and it will start rebooting for a wipe config and we have to acknowledge this twice because we have to make sure that we don't make mistakes. We want to be sure that we initialize all the disks and we really want to. So we let it boot. We don't have to touch anything. Uh, it will prompt us with a warning that we have to configure auto support in order to be able to receive help when needed. So we confirm that we have read this message and we have to enter the port uh, via which we want to be able to connect to the uh, cluster. And the IP address will be 151 in my case. Netmask is class C. I don't care about the gateway. Um, and I want to keep on configuring using the command line. Now, do you want to create or join a cluster? Of course, we want to create a cluster. And this is going to be a single node cluster. So we say yes. And the admin password 
we enter it twice. And once we've done that, we have to enter the cluster name. So we call it single, but you could take any name you like, obviously. So it starts creating the cluster. That will take some time because it has to start a lot of daemons. Then we have to enter the port name for the cluster management interface. This is the interface you would use when you connect with System Manager, for example. Um, I run E0C, and the IP address would be 192.168.4.150 in my case. Uh, Netmask is class C again. Don't care about the gateway, and I don't care about DNS. Of course, in real life you do care, but I don't. Controller. Where's so the what? controller? Located somewhere in the Netherlands. And uh, once that's done, I can log in. So I enter the admin user and password, and I'm logged into my single node cluster. So I run cluster show, and I see single uh, 01, which is the first node and only node. And it's healthy, and eligibility is true. And I also have an aggregate, and I'm all set. So I'm done.